Hello and welcome to LiveWise C-Suite reporting season coverage. I'm Ali Selby and today we're incredibly lucky to be joined by the founder and CEO of Wise Tech Global, Richard White, for a deep dive into the company's latest result and a glimpse into what investors can expect over the coming 12 months. Thank you so much for joining us today, Richard. I'm incredibly excited to be sitting down with you today to talk all it's, about Wise Tech. It's so great to be here. For those that don't know, can you briefly explain what WiseTech and CargoWise is and what you do? So we provide a, an execution platform, a, a piece of software that is very comprehensive, runs the front and back office of a very large global logistics companies and helps them plan, organize, move and deliver the freight, clear it through the borders, do all the things that they have to do to make the freight capable of being picked up and delivered from an export country to an import country through the terminals, through the customs borders, dealing with all the risks and complexities and doing many, many things to make it look like a seamless transaction and doing that in real time on a single global database that makes everything look completely visible and manageable. Okay, you've just released your first half result. It was incredible. The share price was up 11% today at one point at 12%. What numbers do you think really drove that result? Ultimately, I think what's really driving people to want to be in WiseTech is the fact that we're a continuous growth company. We're very high growth. We're very profitable, which in, in a tech sense is quite unusual. A lot of tech companies are growth, but not a lot of tech companies are, a lot of, lot of tech companies are very high growth and very profitable. And you can see, when you look forward in WiseTech, you can see a long way into the future where we've got potential to grow even more. WiseTech beat analyst estimates on net profits and revenues. Is that growth trajectory sustainable? Well, absolutely. The way to think about this, though, is that a lot of companies, as they grow bigger, suffer with this thing called base effect, where they start slowing down over time. And look, WiseTech's growth is not perfect. It's not like a linear line from here to the future with no bumps. It's, it's bumpy, but it's not bumpy in a in a long-term sense. It's over time, it's been growing very consistently. We're, we're about to pass a billion dollars. When we went to market in 2016, April 11, 2016, our forward revenue for that year was $102.5 million. So we've grown you know, about 10 times in that time. And we've done that through deliberately planned and executed strategies, which is basically building great product, winning fantastic customers, and building revenues from those fantastic customers. There's obviously, I guess, a balance between investing back into the business and then rewarding shareholders with dividends. You just announced a record interim dividend of 7.7 .7 cents per share. That was up 17% compared to the prior period. And it was actually up 33% compared to city estimates. That dividend was a 20% payout ratio. Do you think investors could see that payout ratio increase? over the short term? It depends on your view of what the right formula is. And we've made that 20% statement for a long time, and I think it's the right balance for us. Uh, after all, when you invest a dollar in this company, you get the growth that you get out of the share. So there's always dividends, but there's also capital growth. And because the company is such a high growth engine and it's such a profitable business, you have to choose between paying dividends and reinvesting. And no dividends would seem wrong, but paying it all out in dividend would, would actually lower the ability for the company to grow itself. The cash could be used better to grow the company. And so there's always this balance between dividends and, and growth. I think we've got the balance right. There's obviously been quite a lot of disruption in the Red Sea at the moment. Have you been impacted by that? And how does your software help companies, I guess, navigate that volatility? Well, it's exactly that. We help companies navigate those volatilities, whether it's the war in Ukraine, or whether it's some other geopolitical issue, whether it's the, the, the problems in the Red Sea, logistics has to move. People need this stuff. I mean, bear in mind the Red Sea is really only affecting trade between Europe and, and Asia. The Asia trade in the Pacific, between America and North America, uh, South America and so forth, is un uninterrupted by that. But what actually happens is when you can't use the Red Sea, can't use the canal, then you have to go around the, around the Cape. And that means that the journey is at least a couple of weeks longer. That means the supply chain is longer. That means you need more goods in the supply chain. So in a very minor way, that's a slight advantage from a transactional point of view for the company. But in the end, what's really going on is we're able to visualise that, help customers predict that, help them plan it and help them avoid it. 
Okay, the global freight industry faced a slowdown in 2023. Many predict that this slowdown could continue throughout 2024 and possibly into 2025. How has that impacted WiseTech? Well, only about 3% of our growth comes from the volume in the industry. Most of our growth is coming from winning new customers and growing our business across uh, geographically and across different adjacent marketplaces that we're in. And so most of WiseTech's growth isn't related to um, volume in the supply chain. But equally, the volume in the supply chain was not the big change. It's a slight drop in volume, but there was a very big drop in, drop in margins or profitability in the supply chain. That doesn't affect us because we're a volume-based transaction. Where I think we are very, very strong is we keep growing because the company's winning new customers. We just won Sinotrans, that's the 13th company in the top 25. That means we're more than 50% of the top 25 are rolling out or rolled out our platform across the world. And that's a significantly positive indicator of the company's growth. I think the real issue here is that we're not particularly connected with economics, we're connected to growth. Okay, you talked there about being in deals with 13 of the world's top freight forwarders. Are you in talks with the remaining 12? 24 of the 25 are using our product somewhere in the world. Uh, and equally in the top 200, there's a very substantial penetration as well. But our goal is to have uh, our customers use extensive parts of the software in every location in the world. We want to be the operating system for global logistics. And to do that, you have to be able to provide everybody with a comprehensive platform that runs their entire business. We're definitely on the way there. In the report, you talk about increasing prices to deal with inflation. How have your customers responded to that so far? In recent times, though, uh, the prices have actually moderated. The inflation has pulled back significantly. IT wages have, have become much more balanced. And so in recent times, there haven't been substantial price rises. But equally, there have been price rises. And, I, and over 30 years in business, I've never had a customer be happy about a price rise. <laughs> But I think the answer is that we provide enormous value. We, we cut the operating costs of our customers dramatically. We make them less, uh, less subject to risk and compliance issues. We make them able to grow their businesses much faster. There's a whole lot of benefits, and I think the benefits va vastly outweigh the cost of the software. And in fact, uh, as we've it's been explained at the market for the last 11 years, our attrition rate of customers has been less than 1%. Okay, in the report you talked to investing a billion dollars into product development over the last five years. Mm -hmm. How is that translating into revenue growth? It's coming as very large uh, product innovations that are either in our core space or add to the, our product in that space or extend ourselves into new markets, geographic markets or adjacent markets, such as moving into uh, landside logistics. We bought two companies in the US that aid that by rail and road around the port communities, around the, the, the terminals effectively. And that's a big investment that's been going to produce enormous results. But ultimately it's always about building product that makes the world a better place, solves really complicated, ugly problems and makes them better. And by the way, this year will be something like 360 or 370 million this year alone in, in R&D investment. And we've become much, much more efficient at building software. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about M&A in a little bit, but I just sure. want to talk about AI. It's really the buzzword of the moment. I'd love to know how WiseTech is using artificial intelligence or AI to improve productivity internally. So it's not just internally, it's going to be for us to make our business much more efficient, our software development more efficient, which I've talked about already doing. It's also to make our product in the hands of our customers so that the customer is so much more efficient as well. That's how you get a, a real premium for your software. Um, we've been doing machine learning, uh, big data and automations for more than 10 years. And the recent explosion in generative AI, things like ChatGPT, have given an extra layer to that, but it's not a substantially different idea than the things we've been working in. So last year when everybody was talking about AI, we were very silent on AI. We were saying very little. But uh, this earnings result, we decided to expose what we've been doing and what it means for the company and what it means for our customers. And it's, it's very big. Um, in fact, just as a kind of a, a fun thing, uh, Andrew Cartledge, my CFO and myself, published avatars of ourselves reading from today's uh, earnings release uh, as avatars. And we published it in English, of course, because that's what we read. But we also published it in four other languages, um, French, Spanish, German, and Mandarin. 
And that all got done by computer without us sitting in front of a camera at all. Those avatars were, were taken from training that we taught the avatars to do, but that was not us speaking those things, even though it looks like we're speaking five languages. WiseTech acquired Matchbox Exchange in October, and historically you've been quite aggressive with acquisitions. Are there any other target companies on the horizon? Well, if I told you that, I would have to shoot you. <laughs> no, look, I, I think the way to think about this is, someone said to me the other day, are you going to restart your m and I said, we never stopped. It's a continuum of things. We've, take, we've bought 47 companies in the last seven years. It's been a powerful uh, engine of growth for the company, not the companies themselves, but what it does to our core platform. It enhances and grows our business and lets us reach into new geographies and new markets and new adjacencies and add a lot of value to our customers. And I think, in a matchbox, by the way, just to give a, a clear message of what that was, they, in the um, landside logistics piece, the port communities, they allow you to take an input container and instead of returning it to the, to the terminal or the container park for dehire, you can reuse it immediately for an export entry. And so instead of tra travelling on four trips, it's two and a half trips, saving carbon, removing trucks from the road, saving our customers money, saving their customers money, and making the world a better place. WiseTech has maintained its FY24 guidance for revenues and EBITDA, and it's increased its margin guidance range to 44 to 46%. I'm sure a lot of analysts are really, really happy with that. What are the key risks that could derail that outlook? Well, I don't think there's much in the way of risks that we have to worry about here. We have to focus on building a great business and, and really what we did, in fact, is just worked harder at uh, extracting the values from the businesses that we've acquired, including Bloom and Innovasa, which we bought last February. And it's really de redeploying, you know, very valuable people in the business to build things better. And it's about being very uh, conservative with costs, so you're making sure that you're not spending money on things that don't work. And it's really about focusing on how you can make the business a more efficient business, getting that leverage out of the business, getting leverage out of the growth of the business. So you don't feel like your business could be impacted by any black swan events? I, well, a black swan event by definition is impossible to predict, so I can't tell you what that's, that's about. But ultimately, if you're very agile and you're smart and you're focused and something does happen, you will have to work around it. And that's what we did. Look, COVID was a black swan event. Nobody predicted COVID until they did. We were the first people that in the public markets to talk to COVID in Australia. We announced that COVID was a serious thing on February 19. It was, we got terribly smashed up because nobody believed this, that COVID was a serious thing. But three months later, we were able to adjust that business and grow into COVID and we have powered through it, made an enormous amount of growth happen because of COVID, because we thought about it as a problem to solve and we got on solving the problem. Okay, of the 20 brokers who cover the stock, 10 rated a buy and 10 rated as a hold. What would you say to those people who are currently holding it or the viewers who don't hold WiseTech right now to get them across the line? I'm not going to recommend somebody to buy the stock. I'm going to say, look at the company, look at the track record, look at what we're doing, look at how that future has been unfolding and how much further we've got to go in terms of growth. And WiseTech is a growth stock with a huge future. And once you get settled on that, you realise that we've been hitting goals for now on market eight years, uh, coming April, eight years. I think you'll have to understand that our track record is very strong and our business is extremely strong and getting better all the time. You have to choose what you invest in and I'm not going to advise you on that, but the best thing you can do is look at the facts and make a decision. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Richard. It was an absolute honour to speak with you today. It, it was an absolute pleasure to be here. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you did, why not give it a like? Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're adding so much great content just like this every single week.